Hello, welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I get uh, quite a few comments from people that watch the video and uh, in the last video I described an NFED half wave where I said it was probably one of the uh, most cost effective antennas uh, available to home radio. And I mentioned a version which is just 39 foot long, give or take. And this 39 foot long antenna covers 40, 20 and 10 meters. And I should have actually pointed out that it can be used as a, as a, a compact inverted V. So apologies there, but um, if you look at that uh, uh, video, uh, if you haven't seen it, then you can actually use uh, the NFED half wave as an inverted V and uh, the 40 meter compact version, which is just 39 foot long, um, can be used obviously as an inverted V and in a very small garden. So uh, there we are, update on that. Now, are we actually going through a new period in ham radio commercially? Well, I wonder. I've been looking through some old radcoms and it's only around about the mid 60s that the Japanese equipment appeared on the market. Prior to that, there were KW Electronics and there was some uh, equipment from uh, the US um, all built in the Western world. Um, KW, of course, was built in the UK, and there were some imports from America. But it wasn't until the mid-1960s that all of a sudden the Japanese products appeared on the market. And these were mass-produced products, and although they were fairly basic in some ways, they did the job, and they did the job very well, and it was, uh, wasn't long before the uh, Yesu um, FT, famous FT-101, the original FT-101, appeared on the market. And then TRIO followed, and ICOM appeared on the market. ICOM actually were a little bit later coming into the marketplace, but of course today they're right at the top. The first showing of serious Japanese products appears in mid-1966, and here's a shot of a Radcom advert in December 1966 uh, by J.E.B. Lowe, uh, latterly known as Lowe Electronics, that uh, no longer trade now, but were a very famous name for many years in the ham radio market. So we suddenly, uh, or well, say suddenly, very rapidly trans transition, transition from the um, home market, so of course there were quite a few UK companies making uh, products for home radio then, to a market that started to be dominated by the Japanese. And that has been going on for quite a few years. In fact, it's, it's still current. But all of a sudden, we're seeing some serious Chinese radios coming on the market. And again, they're mass produced. I mean, they're not up to the level of Yeyesu and your icon yet, but they are coming onto the market. And for a long time, the Chinese have been nibbling away at the ham radio market, but all of a sudden we're seeing some serious products. We've now got Zigu uh, starting to make their presence felt on the world market. And today we're going to look at the XPA125, which is a 100 watt amplifier, which can be driven by QRP rigs, even as low as half a watt will give you um, something like about 50 or 60 watts out and you dare to increase the drive level to one watt then it will deliver 100 watts plus. And the actual power level um, is controlled both by the drive input level and the ALC feedback into your transceiver. By the way, is it Zigu or is it Zygo? Or is it something else? If I got the pronunciation wrong, then apologies. But um, it's like the name, we used to struggle over the name of Yesu originally when it came in, so I'm not sure whether it's Zigu or Zygu or something else. Let me know if you've got an opinion on that. So um, what I'm going to do now is take a look at this amplifier and you'll see what, you know, how I tested it and so forth and how it performs. So let's take a look. The XPA125 is quite a chunky beast and uh, on the side there it's got a handle for carrying around and talking about carrying around let's uh, see how much it weighs well it's showing about 3.2 3.3 kilos including the strap 
it's around about 18 centimeters wide. If we include the connectors at the back, it's around about 30 centimeters deep. And height, it's just around about uh, eight and a half centimeters uh, high. On the front panel, there's very few controls really. We've got the main on off switch there. Then we've got the PA switch, so you can switch the PA in or out of circuit so that uh, you can feed the transceiver straight through and bypass the PA. Uh, you've got the band change button there. If you pulse it, it, it changes bands, but if you use the correct um, lead and your transceiver is so equipped, band uh, selection is automatic. And then down here, you've got the auto ATU button that completes the front panel. Uh, apart from the LCD display, which I'll, I'll show um, illuminated in a moment. On the side, the carrier handle is an expanding one, so it makes it uh, very easy to get your things underneath and carry the amplifier around. And now let's have a look at the uh, back panel. The back panel is pretty clean. You've got the antenna socket there, uh, SO239. The transceiver RF input, again SO239. You've got a DC plug. Nominally, it uh, is looking for about 13.8 volts and the plug and cable for that is supplied. Below that, you've got uh, an earth terminal there. You've also got a uh, fuse on the back panel there. The accessory port here is a six uh, pin mini uh, connector, which I'm told is a PS2. I haven't tried it yet, but I think the PS2 connector is uh, quite common or was quite common for connecting the mouse onto Windows PCs and amongst other things it's got PTT and ALC and those are the the essential um, connections you need to make um, with uh, an external transceiver ALC and the PTT and then to the right there you've got 3.5 mm stereo which is used for updating the firmware there's nothing lightweight about this linear. It's a nice chunky linear, which inspires confidence, I think. And it's thermally cool. There's no fan there. There's, uh, if you can see there, there's a grill there, which would let the air flow. And uh, in use, I've found that there's no uh, heating problems at all. It uh, runs pretty, pretty cool. On the top row, we've got the input VSWR, which I just want to show at the moment. We've got a supply voltage of 13.6 volts. We've got a one amp hour standing current. We've got a 26 centigrade temperature because I've been using the amplifier. And that would be the output VSWR if the amplifier was connected to uh, an antenna. Then on the next row, we've got the transmit and receive indicators. We've also got the amplifier. The amplifier is shown as switched off at the moment. If I press the amp button, it will go into circuit, press it again, it will go out of circuit. So in that configuration, the amplifier um, would uh, be bypassed by the transceiver. <clears throat> We've also got an auto ATU. Um, and if I press the button there, it will press it in, it, where are we, there we are. If I press the auto ATU button, it'll go on and off just like that because it won't tune and it's got a signal uh, going into it. Then on the bottom row there, we've got what would be the input power if it was connected to a transceiver. We've got uh, on the far right, the output power. And then we've got the band change there, which is normally automatic. But uh, if I press this, you can see it's cycling through the bands manually. But as I say, if you've got it connected to a transceiver that's got band data, then the amplifier will switch the bands automatically. Well, this is the test setup. I've got the amplifier, the power meter above the amplifier, and then to the right, the X5105 transceiver, which I've set to FM so that I uh, get a continuous carrier. And just behind it, you can see the uh, dummy load. And just to one side, you can see the CE15 interface uh, board. I've set the output power of the X5105 to one watt. I think the power meters totally accurate but it's uh, good enough for um, an indication. Now if I switch the amplifier on it's going to go full scale so let's go up to the next this is the 200 watt setting and that's well over uh, 100 watts on the power meter 
and the amplifier is reading just about uh, 100 watts at the moment. Now that's on a uh, continuous carrier, 100 watts. I guess the peak power would uh, be uh, above that on sideband. Uh, the makers recommend that uh, you set the X5105 to 5 watts output and the ALC will take care of it. So I've set the transceiver now to 5 watts. Let's see what happens. Well, we get a very healthy power and we're still stuck around about 98, 99, 100 watts. So I think the truth of the matter is that on a steady carrier, you get about 100 watts at least indicated on there. The meter says well over 100 watts. So possibly the uh, meter on here is a bit low. Meter on there is a bit optimistic, but uh, we're pretty sure that we're getting 100 watts at least out. And on sideband, I guess the peak will be a bit above that anyway. Now I've just set the tune button on the transceiver, uh, on the amplifier rather, to on. And, and we're getting about the same power, about 100 watts, give or take. Um, and uh, well over 100 watts on the power meter. So the uh, certainly the ALC is working from the X5105 um, into the uh, amplifier there and it obviously takes uh, care of the control. So you don't really have to worry about the power setting if you're using the X5105. One watt seems to give you virtually full output. Five watts gives you the same level because the ALC kicks in. Now I switched the power output on the X5105 um, down to half a watt to see what sort of level we get out on half a watt. Well, pretty respectable. We're still getting, uh, we're still nudging what, uh, we're still nudging 100 watts almost. Uh, so that's uh, what, 80 odd, 80, 90 watts. So that's pretty respectable. It means to say that uh, even with half a watt you're going to get a decent amount of power and I noticed through those tests that um, even with uh, delivering sort of a steady carrier we're only hitting 30 what 30 it was 33 centigrade it's gone down to 32 it's cooling down now um, putting my hand on the case it really is cool uh, so I don't think you're going to have uh, too much of a problem with uh, heat on this amplifier but as I say it's a fairly large case actually it's very heavy so I think there's quite a lot of metal work in there uh, so that will take care of the uh, thermal uh, conductivity and, and uh, keeping the uh, amplifier cool. Unfortunately there's no feet, it's pity there's not feet underneath the amplifier. I feel, to, I feel it should be sort of like that, which would be much more comfortable to look at uh, than like that. But uh, the fact is it hasn't got any feet. I'm sure that uh, you can uh, come up with your own ideas of uh, tilting it. During all these tests I was running the X5105 off of its internal battery. Although it sits quite nicely on the amplifier, it's almost the same width, which looks quite nice. Unfortunately, when you put the tilt stands back, the tilt stands just slightly miss the side of the amplifier, so you, you can't tilt it back. But I suppose a lot of people will be quite happy like that, particularly if the uh, amplifier and uh, transceiver were sort of at uh, head height when you're sitting down. But uh, it looks quite a nice little package like that. Now clearly this amplifier has applications with other low power transceivers as well. And I was hoping that I'd be able to uh, test this amplifier with the IC705, but uh, I hadn't got the necessary lead. And as it seemed like taking a few days or perhaps even more, um, all I can do is sit it on top of the amplifier and whet your appetite, but <laughs> I think it looks quite nice actually. Clearly the 705 is a bit bigger than the amplifier, but not big enough to uh, look um, anything other than quite nice on top of it actually. So that would make a nice uh, station, the IC705 and a 100 watt amplifier. You'd have uh, HF uh, to 6 metres. Uh, with a decent amount of, amount of power. Actually, on six meters, this is, I think it's only rated at about 80 watts, but anyway, that's uh, more than enough for, uh, I think, most normal mortals. Uh, but yeah, a nice, nice combination, and um, I suppose the uh, FT818, FT817 would sit on there as well, the, uh, uh, the Helicraft uh, KX3 or KX2, and uh, you have a nice, uh, 
nice uh, setup there. And for size, here's the uh, Discovery uh, sitting on the uh, top of the amplifier. And to complete the picture, here's the KX2 sitting on top of the amplifier. Actually, the KX2 looks really nice on there. <laughs> uh, it certainly would drive it, of course. And, uh, well, yeah, I think that's quite a nice little combination, actually. Could work quite well. All I need, of course, is the connecting leads, but uh, all that is in hand. So what we're now going to do is to go through the main bands. Um, I've put half a watt drive from the X5105 into the amplifier and we'll see what sort of power levels we get. So 80 meters, we're getting around about 95 watts indicated out and a healthy indication on the meter. Now on 40 meters, again the half watt drive, and again we're getting watts, oh we're getting 100, just over 100 watts output, around about 100 watts output, that's pretty healthy. Now on 20 meters, we've done 20 meters, 20 meters, but we'll just do it again. Uh, what are we getting? We're getting 100, just over 100, about 100 watts out on 20 meters with uh, half watt. Now on 15 meters, again with the uh, half watt drive, again very healthy level. Uh, 12 meters, again pretty healthy level there. And on 10 meters, uh, bit down on 10 meters, about to 75 watts. And on six meters, we're down to around about 40, 45 watts. Um, so we'll, we'll just try increasing the drive level. Well, increasing the drive level to two watts, we're getting nudging, we're nudging about 65, about 65 watts out on six meters. And I just realized I've missed uh, uh, the 17 meter band. So let's check that 17 meter band. Oh, yeah, that's what, 100 watts. So that's, that's very good. That's the Zygu. XPA125, a nice little amplifier which will certainly give you megawatts from your QRP radios and we should have those uh, in stock in the uh, next uh, month or so. If you're interested obviously give our sales guys a ring and um, they'll be able to give you more up-to-date information. As usual thanks for watching this video, glad that uh, you could join me and uh, as usual, also thank you very much for all your contributions to uh, the videos and uh, your, the nice words uh, that um, uh, many of you have uh, sent me. P press the subscribe button if you want to be alerted to upcoming videos. Um, plan to do one a, a week or so, sometimes a few more actually, because you never know what's going to pop up out of the woodwork. You know, you've, you've just done a video and you get a phone call and somebody says, oh, uh, this and this and this and then... Uh, uh, Portsmouth will get in touch with them and say, we've got something really exciting. In fact, they have got something really exciting at the moment, but I'll keep that to, until um, I've actually got a sample with me. In the meantime, in the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio. We can start to look forward to longer days. A bit more daylight will help uh, propagation, I think in the Northern Hemisphere anyway, and we hope the sunspot cycle will still be going up, which I'm sure it will. We just don't know at what rate. In the meantime, you take care. Speak to you in the next video.